Hello. Garthnix here, back again with Squad Line Battle. Uh, whoa, got the date wrong already. 15th of the 2nd. <clears throat> 2022. Because I have my own unit inside. Come on, chat. We like to hear it. Alright, guys, well, <clears throat> welcome to the stream. Let me. Uh, get the map up for you. Today we've got uh, Electro, who we've had on the stream before, I think several times now, um, and Satiri Papageo. I can never say his name right. I'm so sorry. I apologize every single time, Papa. Um, but yeah, both Phalanx guys tonight, so um, interesting to see how this goes. Maybe this is their like, decider of who uh, is commander. What do you reckon, guys? Hopefully we're going to speak to them after the uh, stream, um, <clears throat> and we can see whether they... Uh, <laughs> whether that's the motivation here so uh yeah squad line battle server two tonight uh it's a don d server so big thanks to them for providing it thanks again obviously to uh verna voss and dragster as well uh as always for arranging everything uh thanks to the commanders for stepping up um and welcome to all the players um they are going to be um I'm looking at Whisper's comment uh, in the thing that's why i'm stalling but um they're going to be uh playing on hill 400 tonight so um, pretty brutal game lined up, probably. We're going to see artillery become very important. Um, probably less so on the tanks, uh, but you never know. We did see some interesting stuff last time on Squadline Battle Server 2 with uh, Hill 400. I feel like somebody parked a tank in the middle of Hill 400, and it was, like, really, really powerful. Um, 75 in the middle there, just, like, machine gunning all the enemy infantry as they were trying to rush the uh, bunker up there. But uh, I don't know if we're going to see that tonight. I personally like to play a little strategy with a tank around the derail train or, or uh, broken train or whatever it's called. Um, let's get the map up. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to be on the uh, Axis uh, side tonight, following the Axis um, with Electro as the commander. And we're going to then be seeing like the uh, friendlies in blue on the right-hand side there. Uh, so Royal River Crossing is Zerkow, or Paper Mill Zerkow, definitely uh, the preferred uh, start, I think, just in terms of getting across the river. Um, the other one's a bit annoying to get across the river, it really costs you time. Um, Eastern Slope, uh, in, as like the next uh, line, you know, the next uh, level, Ellsberg Junction and uh, Trainwreck, probably Eastern Slope more preferred Ellsberg Junction is very difficult because uh, there's a lot of uh, forest and stuff like up on the north there um, train wreck is pretty pretty tricky you can put a Lux back on the road uh, you see where it bends around in H8 keypad 8 um, there's like a hairpin bend and you can kind of get a Lux on the side there um, and maybe uh, another one further up on that road like up the hill and kind of cover but um, the allies definitely have the advantage pushing right along the edge of the map on F8 uh, keypads one two and three uh, up on that hill there so <clears throat> then hill 400 as i say could see some interesting stuff there certainly going to see a lot of artillery um interesting pushes smoke is very powerful there as well if we uh, get good artillery uh, from the ally side obviously we've got a uh, convoy ambush from the left stucken farm and frederica junction i think all three are difficult like if they get pushed back um like right back convoy ambush is probably the hardest because it's so open um but none of them are really that great bergstein church is a sort of classic point um but both it and kirkveg down to the south there are really hard to hold rear of the house i think is like the most holdable um for the allies if they get pushed back to there um especially from flak pits um but that hill that runs along the f column um along the road there if if the axis can get their garrison into one of those areas say c4 keypad 7 something like that then um or you know keypad 5 maybe um, up on the top of that hill then that can really cause problems okay let's check see whether we've started yet <clears throat> not quite i think we've got uh 47 and 50 players in the server so uh, we're just waiting on maybe one more, um, one, two more, so, because uh, they're probably empty slot, because I don't believe there's a streamer on the other side, maybe I'm wrong, um, sorry if there is, let me double check, um, probably a good idea, isn't it? Um, obviously looking forward to the, the seasonal as well, so, um, like, 
like really looking forward to the season. I mean, I saw Das Outberg's uh, trailer thing for it today. So if you haven't seen that already, do check out Dax, Das Outberg's YouTube channel because um, he's got a really great trailer for the seasonal. And it's it's like emotive. It, it really pumped me up. I, I really want to see that. Um, I'm really excited for it. We've got our show tomorrow as well. No connection. Shout out to him. He's playing right now on server one. Um, but we've got our YouTube show or our uh, Twitch live show as well tomorrow, uh, which will be going on YouTube, excuse me, um, afterwards as well, where we've got Heidi and Jane um, of, you know, how could you ask for better guests really for the opening show? Uh, that's going to be over on No Connection stream or you can come watch it on mine. I'll be hosting um, his. So, um, yeah, we just, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a really good one. Um, we're going to, look back at last seasonal we're going to run through the clans because obviously obviously there's so many more clans in now as well or communities like it's not really uh <laughs> clans is probably not the right word but um it's like so many teams in this uh tournament um so we're going to run through the kind of history of their communities and then we will be um <clears throat> looking obviously forward to the next week uh the beginning of the sort of qualifier stages uh, looking at some of those games then we're going to um, watch a few clips from uh, maybe last year some of the trailers for the different teams um, and we're obviously going to be talking to Heidi and Jane um, possibly throughout maybe just at the end for a QA. and a um, it will sort of depend how busy they are obviously they've got a lot going on um, so yeah looking forward to that big time definitely definitely looking forward to that all right so uh, let's kind of get into it I think we're almost there with the restart um, let me start a squad and we'll get into it. Okay, so we've got Zerkau, Eastern Slope, Southern Approach, interesting, Kirkveg, uh, uh, Kirkveg and Frederica Junction, excuse me. <clears throat> Just 10 seconds till I deploy, then we'll get going and get into the game. Okay. There we go. Steady. Should be able to see that now. Um, as you can see, the points kind of not set mid up. kind of even, I would say. Um, I don't think they necessarily favour one or the other. Or is it voice? I don't think they necessarily favour one team massively or the other. Southern approach is like very hard for both. Um, <clears throat> it maybe, maybe favours the Germans. It's it's difficult to say. Um, I think it's all up for grabs at Southern approach. Eastern slope definitely favours the Germans. Um, it's but well, it it in a way it favours the Allies. Like, but if it was Hill four hundred, it would really favour them. But as it is, like, okay, it's close to the edge. Like, it's it, the Allies can get to it easily. But at the same time, there's a lot of area down the hill in squares H5 uh, and 6 where they can just sit the axis and they're still putting, like, placing capping power on this. You know, they can be all down here and be placing capping power on it. So um, it's, in some ways, it's kind of easier for them. Okay, it's got this central bit, but actually if they RT it, um, then it, it kind of prevents the enemy from being able to get in there. Um, <clears throat> slightly unusual tactic, but it does work really well. Uh, for Hill 400, if it's right here, then it is probably worse for the Axis because um, they can be getting in much more from this angle. And I don't know, like there's momentum. Like if you lose Hill 400, the momentum you can easily get swept over Eastern Slope because it is so close. But where it's here, and there's this like long distance between Southern Approach and Eastern Slope, it's uh, it's definitely going to be tricky uh, uh, for the Allies uh, than Hill 500. But it does it does look like the Allies are first on the cap, so let's go over and check that Southern Approach just beneath us now. <clears throat> okay, so they looks like they've dropped people off. Slightly tricky on Hill 400 because as you can see, I'm actually touching the the top of the skybox here. Um, this hill is so so high. If you look down here, like uh, down at the the factory down there, like it's the elevation is not an illusion when you're playing the game. It is very, very, very steep. Okay, so fanning out well uh, looks like with the allies 
definitely way ahead. Uh, I mean, that's to be expected. Like, if, if they're driving up this way, coming through Eastern Slope, it's really tough. Coming this way along the, the train tracks, it's also tough. This big hill is a lot to climb. Um, it definitely favours the Allies' uh, southern approach. I think we can see that now, um, at least from the start. Uh, they've got the easier way, you know, route to get there. But the same with Hill 400. Um, and actually probably throughout the whole map. Okay. Actually starting to engage now. It looks like Bacon over here is the sort of first man in for the Axis. Appropriately, an assault player. Let's see what he can do here. There's a lot of artillery coming in, and this is the problem with Hill 400. You get stuck in the trees. It's a lot of machine gun fire coming in there. I don't know if it's speculative. It's a pretty good nade there. Doesn't manage to get them, but. Got a bit more to worry about here. Let's highlight everybody. So we've got Shizgara here and Bacon to his right. Does he know he's there? He must be able to hear him. Yeah, kills Bacon. Oh, it's a smoke grenade over there. That's a long throw. Okay, let's get out of the trees and uh, see what's going on on the map. So. <clears throat> Southern approach well under control here, but as you can see, the Axis have moved right around. We've got King and uh, Jig Squad all the way around Hill 400, and not much resistance over here, it looks like. A few people in the trees here, uh, the Don D Squad. S couple of people up there. War, of course, uh, playing soon. Um, might even be covering that game, never know. Um, they got one this weekend. SCDB as well. See Doctor and Johanna's over there. Garrison placement looking pretty standard. Uh, nodes are up, obviously. Full artillery. Commander's right there as well. Electro uh, commanding some who's at STDB. Uh, Phoenix, who are playing this weekend as well. Um, commanding that artillery. Let's have a little look where the uh, markers are. So we've got enemy infantry uh, spotted over here. Is that is that reasonable? Uh, the Gulf marker, mm, sort of yes and no. Ninja Pulver, um, who we see play on Squad Live Battle a lot. Going down there to the SCDB guys. Shout out to my boy Torfisk over here. Hello Torfisk. Very good player, uh, played a lot. Um, if a little bit, uh, you know, exasperated with the game at this point. Um, I'm surprised he's uh, he's playing this evening. Um, probably needs, like, you know, a spa day. Uh, Gem, very good player. Causing some problems over here for the Axis. But going down to Faker. So they have got kind of a good encirclement beginning at least, but at the same time, all this area here, like E and F, 5, 6, they're not actually capping. So these lot over here, they're not actually capping. And remember what I said before about using this back area to defend. They don't have really a good garrison set up behind in order to allow them to do that easily in the case that the enemy, say, get through uh, one of these areas or even go all the way round. Okay, they've got this out wide, which is probably good, because as we can see from uh, Dog's infantry marker here, if the enemies do get right round, then they could get in the back, and this hopefully will act as a proximity warning for that. But uh, yeah, it does look like uh, Lopake, uh, sorry if I said your name wrong, is going back to use these supplies to build a garrison, so that's a very good idea from him. Um, the artillery, of course, fairly difficult to get to for the... Uh, allied recon squad so um, very powerful uh, position over there for the axis looks like they are making it slowly slowly closer to the point here 
Torf is still kind of uh, holding that edge. One on one through the trees. Nitro didn't even see him there. Don't see too much tank action as I mentioned before. Um, it's quite interesting that they haven't uh, used that tactic actually of putting a tank. Uh, they had it like right here in Hill 400 but it could equally work um, over here if you put it on the road um, for the allies especially and kind of face it uh, slightly down the hill. Um, you could definitely get a lot of good shots through the trees just as we know uh, anyone who's played this game extensively um, trees and bushes do not protect you very well from a tank machine gun. Um, Eastern Slope looks like being defended by this war squad um, and they're doing an okay job it looks like for now but uh, it, there may be sort of an amassment of uh, allies over this way or whether or not that's uh, got a bit of an exaggeration an amassment there seems to have been a uh, transport truck here and now the Dundee squad um, pushing up but I feel like they weren't too far away from here when we saw them last as well. The war squad um, keeping them at bay. Uh, Make as well, very good player. Um, being able to keep them from the flank. There's a couple guys here, um, NVIDIA and uh, Wakanda. Wakanda, very good uh, player as well for DC. Uh, up against uh, SCDB Doctor, who we've seen play well before as well. Be interested to see who kind of comes out on top for this one. White Force as well on the left with the flank. Surely they can hear the machine gun. And he goes down to Kieran. Nice shots there. Machine gun versus machine gun. So they have still got enemies uh, in the point here. Torfisk and Ke uh, Kembara. Sorry. Barba. Kembaba. Uh, holding it pretty strong here in the trees just not really moving uh, but now that the uh, smoke is down it might allow these guys to move up bacon who we saw right at the start uh, gets a grenade kill on Torfitz could gets a grenade kill on bacon that's a nice one Feltmeister here now pushing up the, the difficulty here for the axis of course is that they have to get through this barbed wire to get into the circle um, the hard point very important we can see that the uh, recon plane has actually identified a few people uh, in and around southern approach but it's not as though they didn't really know they were there it's more just that they uh, are still there ideally probably wanting to get some good artillery out uh, on this area and clear space for their uh, players to move actually through the barbed wire because oh it's going a bit quick for, but the barbed wire extends all the way around that area and so it kind of funnels people through this um, and again Fevernet goes down because it's kind of it's kind of too easy he's exposed to the left there to FSG he's got 20 people looking at him here all just camped up so very tricky um, I'm surprised there's not more artillery going out uh, we did see the artillery fully manned earlier but um, doesn't seem to have continued um, there are these smoke shells out I don't know if it's just that they've been under attack over there perhaps Flynn is over here so uh, and Jetty as well so yes maybe they took out the artillery um, took them a while to get there but they managed to maybe get them in the end um, kind of uh, want to stay around the point here because if they can just get through this barbed wire or round up into this area um, then you know it could be on for them as I mentioned at the start they're both uh, phalanx players here um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see like who comes out on top um, whether they kind of match each other's tactics or you know what uh, Will it just kind of be a bit of a stalemate, or will it uh, actually work? Need to uh, sort this colour out on the screen, I guess, don't I? Uh, now that I can actually see, so we've gone past the 15 minute delay. I'll check the in-game time in a moment. Just let me uh, sort out the uh, screen here. There we go. 
Hopefully that looks a little bit better. Um, sorry about the 15 minute delay, but it's what it is. Um, can't have people kind of abusing it. So, <clears throat> got these lot here uh, up in E and F6. Um, they have kind of closed in a bit more, but it looks like um, they're sort of struggling up in the area uh, around Hill 400. Um, they're actually pretty clear down here, so it could just be that they're being held by only a couple of players. The Allies now are sort of aware of it. It looks like uh, the Dem squad here pushing up, PKKA, um, and Wakanda as well, uh, who we saw earlier. Still fighting against these SCDB players, but still fighting against barbed wire here. Not a good position um, in some ways for the Axis. They want to kind of get get through this area, get pushed down into that uh, bunker down there, into the ditches, trying to get more on the same level um, or just above it. Not like so much higher with so much barbed wire and cliffs. You see here um, NVIDIA able to use the cliff to hide, but um, both us quicker with the shots. Going for the OP here, Ninja Pulver kills both of us. Johannes goes down too. F FLK didn't hear it. Or oh, flick. Sorry. Penny has the height advantage. Just putting suppressing shots down, Ninja Pulver. Penny a bit unlucky with the grenade. Could have been a nice one. 2v1. Ninja Pulver. They can just get that nade down there. Okay. Do they realise that they took this guy out with the grenade? Maybe not. They need to get down there quickly and get that OP out. Or they respawn. Ninja's already back in. Grenade fails to hit the OP. Ninja goes down again though. They know. Doctor knows now. Just weren't quite sure of the timing there, so. Oh my god, bombing run. The allies, I guess, think they this SCDB squad is up on the hill, but they pushed down. Another great reason to get down into this level. They're hardly going to bomb themselves, but the Axis bombing run, intensely more effective. Killing practically everybody on the point here. Commander's the only one up. Torfisk has it all to do for the team here. He's got the cover inside the bunker, but that can be a, a curse as much as a blessing. Copy can rush him. There's only one place he can be, pre-firing around the corner. But Torfis with the kill. Dingus Khan coming up. Satiri's just still crouched in the point with Bacon and Florian flanking right round. It's not looking good for the allies here on their point. Torfis going down to Dingus. Doctor down, so no OP close to the point, but they are capping it pretty heavily. It's 1 hour 11 remaining. And if they do cap it here, I think that the Allies, they sort of had it quite good here, like uh, defensive uh, position-wise, this is quite good around here. Um, but when they have to fall back to uh, Kerfeg or Frederico, uh, they could be in real trouble. Somehow they're not losing it here. I guess it's uh, this garrison that, that must be down over here is allowing them to push into this uh, area. But they've got people behind them still. Faker and Major, they've got about 20 people in front of them. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but at least 10 or 11, 12. Satiri so somehow still alive inside this bunker. Head in the map, controlling the battlefield from inside uh, what is now almost enemy territory. 
this is a very strong flank and uh, I think they're going to find it really really difficult here the uh, the allies to take this point back but the Axis do kind of need to hurry up back here and push in through this area because once they take out these uh, spawns back here it's, it's all over for the allies but they've let the allies get a little bit close to the trenches they don't want to kind of let them in too much um, good nade there Lots of people amassing in this bunker area and Doctor getting good shots out but goes down himself. The cap is on here and it's looking strong. This is hot back here. Gary going down over here it looks like which is not ideal for the axis because that's a little bit less pressure that they're going to be able to put on but it's a strong cap still from the allies perspective it's very very difficult to push up this hill um, into that area they've kind of got it all to do not really much cover, they just got grenades raining down on them. It's a very... You don't want to push up. Torfus going... Uh, getting himself in his hand, if you know what I mean, and uh, running up the hill here. Doing a little jig for us. Trying to get the height, looks like. Might get Cirrus. <coughs> I don't think it's going to happen for them though. Cap's still on. It's a recon plane. It's another recon plane maybe. Unless it's supplies going down. But southern approach being taken there. One hour eight remaining. Um, Electro one. Papa nil. <laughs> That's unfair probably. Maybe it's one all. How do you how do you score that? Maybe it's uh, maybe it's just to say it's four three to the axis. Well, they need to get a uh, a spawn down. They have in F seven. Somewhat frustrated uh, strafing run here. Frustrating run. Um, sorry, I'll never joke again. And they can't push up too quickly here. It looks like Jesus Christ is almost the only person in, but they had got that garrison down, so they are able to get some bodies now in the point. Reese going down, just sprinting for a second too long. Torfisk again, all up in the mix. I'm not sure if he died before, if this is still his life here. He might die now, though. Bacon is toast. They've kind of given up, it looks like, a little bit there. Because Kirkveg is really, really, really getting taken. Um, they've kind of snowballed it through. And this is what I was saying before. It's really, really hard uh, for the allies. They need to get bodies back. Looks like they've actually managed to. They've kind of cleared out the point there. Uh, Papa's inside the point. They've got spawns over here. Um... They are marked though, it looks like, uh, pretty pretty closely by the uh, axes. It's not like they don't know where they are. No artillery again. Um, this could be really, really strong place for artillery because these open fields cause people to run like down the, uh, the wood line and, you know, people will hang out in these buildings. But we are seeing tanks come a bit more into play now. Decided to uh, spend some some resources on a, on a 76 and... Uh, that's a probably good idea actually from the allies. The open field will uh, mean that it's good sight lines. Sparse trees. Not amazing cover. Um, as the allies have to run through, or the axis, excuse me, have to run through this area. Allies doing a much better job of getting back actually now, so Kirkveg uh, no longer really under threat. Um, but not too many axes back over here. Um, Tulf is still up, Wakanda perhaps, um, as mentioned before, really, really good player, so um, 
this is a, a kind of a pairing that could cause like real big problems if they uh, don't get taken out very soon. Sort of speculative shots there. Um, copy missing a little bit, I think. Wakanda with the shots through the uh, corridor there. But yeah, it's absolutely uh, nailed by vibes. I don't know where they've got their spawn point over here. It looks like it's kind of marked in this direction. Um, whether or not that's correct or or what, I don't know. Also, it looks like some allies on item marker in E6 up to the north. I'd like to see where the uh, allies have their garrisons, especially around Kerfeg, um, because it's a very difficult point to defend and you, you kind of need to really have a good kind of garrison strategy. Um, what can be really, really powerful is uh, a garrison not on Frederica necessarily, but like in this area, um, because that's allowing your guys to actually get into this uh, really quickly. And then once they're kind of on this side, they've got cover to then move like potentially all the way around or through. Um, and then also out on this side but as you can see they've kind of given this side to the axis and yeah that means that the tank can shoot them but that can't last forever so instead of pushing like right up like imagine uh, this tank here instead of being as far back as it is was here this road holding the axis back into the tree line Because right now they're a bit too close for comfort, I feel like. You know, some good shooting and a few nades or whatever. Although, <laughs> tanks still having the power to absolutely destroy them. Um, you can see here, Kappa, uh, Flick, Make, uh, Aqu Aquiles, uh, excuse me. All pushing around the, the rear of the point. Um, getting good shots on Make. Sherlock goes to the ground, doesn't realise what's going on. Shred's also down. I think Kron's heard something. Oh, he must know because he's a medic, so he can see that there are uh, injured players back here now. Um, actually, a really sort of interesting secret power of the medic. Mate going for the satchel. Going to get shot, though. Stras hears it. That was good kills, but it goes down himself. That's always the problem when you're a tank driver. It's a bit of a shame the tank uh, didn't have a bit more confidence to stay there. They're getting shot in the side now instead of the front. But the artillery now uh, actually being used. I'm not sure why they haven't done that a while ago. As I mentioned at the start, these kind of like fields and whatever, it really lends itself to artillery because you you know that people aren't, you know all these huge areas where people aren't going to be. They, they push down the hedgerows. They take cover in the buildings. So uh, you kind of intuitively, without having a recon plane, um, sort of can tell. So uh, supplies here going down in C8. Um, interesting, uh, you know, we haven't kind of talked about the use of supplies uh, or supply location that much, um, but... There's quite strong uh, shapes going on. We can see like, uh, you know, triangles uh, out here um, of garrisons, which is kind of what you want because that helps you to like lock off the whole area within uh, the triangle. And then um, the more triangles you have, like the more locked off areas you, you create, uh, you know, that's kind of a flat one, but um, it's possible to like run uh, to an area that's under attack quite easily. I'm surprised there's not a garrison here where the supplies are, but you can see that maybe there's enemies there and have cleared it out. Um, they might have actually been one there before. Looks like they're pushing up the hill, perhaps. Um, but Kirkveg still doesn't have quite the number of Axis players. Despite that good artillery that we saw, the tank still being able to kind of hold its own a little bit. Um, although recon vehicle doing what recon vehicles do getting right around the back here but no way they're going to be able to outrun this gun surely it 
slight mistake here, I think, from the 76. Trying to be tricky, but now a sitting duck. Porsche coming for the the satchel as well, if he can get up close, but Strelok. Aquilis needs to get Strelok because ah, Horsch goes down. Absolutely uh, <laughs> getting outplayed here. That's very lucky though for the recon tank to survive that. Takes out an OP but goes down. Valiant effort there from the recon tank. The 76 kind of panicking and not really quite knowing what to do. Um, that was quite, uh, quite the scene. Sounds like, is this a bombing run? Yes. Bombing their own point at Southern Approach. Interesting play here, I suppose. Um, not quite sure why he's just bombed. Bombed his own players. Sorry, says the commander. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Awkward. 59 minutes. Um, we won't talk about that. We'll save that for the, uh, the interview. Um, Bob. Yeah, so... I can't believe what, <laughs> what I just witnessed. But uh, yeah, Southern Approach now uh, wide open for uh, Elvar to get inside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me with the uh, crazy camera work. Trading. Interesting. Wakanda, though, still causing problems. Dingus trying to get something up. Maybe he's throwing a nade. He's probably going to go down here, I suspect. You might hear the sprinting of Wakanda, but somehow Wakanda able to kind of know that he's there, I guess, um, before, even though... He was sprinting and Dingus wasn't. He's got them sound settings uh, turned right up, deafening himself. Oftentimes, though, uh, you do find that being outside of a trench in this game is uh, beneficial. Quite a decent looking bombing run here. A bit unlucky not to kill more people, I would say, um, from the Allies. Uh, there is a cap going on at Southern. I did think there was. Um, but the race is uh, being won at Kirkveg. Taking the buildings well. You can see that they're kind of right behind where we were looking before. Got it all to do, the Allies pushing in down the road like this. Especially if they can update the Axis artillery markers. Uh, put put artillery markers along the road here. Um, that's really going to be a problem because, like we said, they're going to stick to the edges of the road. They're not going to run through the fields or anything, so... That's why, actually, sometimes in this game, running through the middle of the field is, like, more... It's actually like the right thing to do, but it's so hard. Like when you when it's like this, and you're kind of directly attacking, you just can't because they will see. You. But um, other times, that's a good day there. Oh, I thought it, that was weird. I thought it flew over this way, but it like bounced right off the roof. Nearly actually killed, was it? Doing pretty well here, actually, the Allies are fighting them back. Basically cleared out the point, Trotcher. I push them right back to the uh, Gary here, look. So you can see we're here in D7, uh, looking as we were before at Kirkveg.
Recon plane coming over. The thing is, they know where they are, surely. Sometimes in a situation like that, where you kind of know where they are, uh, it can often it can be better to uh, use the recon plane defensively because you see here, there's like a couple of uh, players. There's actually uh, what is this? A truck as well. Okay, fake ally controlled again. Um, look, they're actually dropping supplies here. They're going to try and build a garrison. Uh, the allies are trying to build a garrison. So that's where a defensive recon plane, um, sort of along here or uh, like this way, um, but especially like along the columns uh, or along the back or whatever, uh, can be really, really helpful because there is a garrison out there. However, it's literally marked spot on straight away <laughs> and that's great play there fortunate positioning from holo Paki. Pake. holo Pake. oh my god yes got shot to pieces there don d squad hold on d squad you don't want to come up against them probably still got the marker there though he did spot it like exactly where it was um, sometimes uh, chuck you know the nade or whatever like before you run in uh, on the other side or whatever if it's like that I suppose for Captain Hindsight still trying to get this uh, garrison the defenders Shano gets three kills there. Lonic's the only one, but he's going to have to be quick, Pashando, because otherwise they're all going to just spawn in again. Maybe he's injured, he's trying to heal there, I'm not sure. Playing a bit passively here, and it might cost him dearly. Artillery, though. Ouch. He can be pretty confident now. Holopake, uh, he knows. Just doesn't want to get killed by his own arty. There's good shots from the RT as well. It's almost like he heard what I was saying. He's throwing nades now, throwing some smoke. Good play there from Hollow Take. That's how you defend. Good job from those guys. So they've sort of amassed uh, closer to the point at Kirkfake here again, but the Allies still uh, still holding it. I think they've learned slightly from last time. They're a lot more spread out than they were before, which makes it obviously harder um, to get your artillery in predictable locations. Um, sometimes you just shoot in between. Not too bunched up, but equally not so spread out that they can't control the area or that Wherever you shoot, you'll at least get one, you know. When you have like two people just sort of next to each other, and then another two people over there, a way off. That's probably the best uh, formation for this sort of thing. Doing well to push through into the woods and get actually almost up to the road here. Roggers. Maybe he's going to see Stefan because if they can get the height advantage here with Sergeant Shred was up coming up onto the road and where Fro Frogger's is, like looking down here onto the hill, uh, down the hill, excuse me, down to the road. Um, that's that's a very nice and powerful position for them. From being where they were a minute ago especially, uh, they managed to do, do a very good job there. Okay, so this again is a, a recon plane, um, this time for the Allies, I uh, believe. I don't see supplies dropping. Um, and I think it's going to probably have gone this way and identified some of these. Although I feel like they probably know roughly where they are uh, already just because they're fighting them so hard. Kieran with a crazy shot there. 
NVIDIA gets killed too. Does he know that these lot are here? He should do. There's infantry marker and a garrison marker. We're looking here by Easy Squad, Jesus Christ, who actually goes down also. Hmm. Not doing a great job now here, the Axis, uh, getting very bogged down. Um, they have cleared out this area again, but they're still kind of not pushed right up. They've got supply truck, the Allies, moving down this road here, so uh, actually Gem gets shot, so we might just go down now. Um, and with the destruction of that Gary over here, I feel like that's really set the Allies back attacking uh, wise as well. However, they do have a half track here, which is interesting. Um, I'm surprised that they haven't driven it slightly closer uh, to the point, but I suppose maybe a few people could spawn here and uh, then somebody else can drive it closer in because I did want to get your guys spawning inside the barbed wire. I mean, as we discussed earlier, uh, the barbed wire is really, really hard to pass if it's got enemies on the other side of it. So you don't want to give them that chance to cover you. You want to get right up there, uh, get your spawns past it. Because then, even if you die, you don't have to do all that hard work all over again and, and push up. Uh, Scipio, though, uh, is up here. And just to take down the garrison. That's good work. However, what it does mean is Dog Squad understands that he's here. Hollow Pake, uh, again, coming to the rescue. Unfortunately for him, he's also outside the barbed wire now. Does he realise? Surely he must have seen that go down. Scipio, though, moving right into the point. He's probably going to be able to take down the garrison here. He's got a lot of time. Rizalit's the only person who could possibly stop him. Machine gun on machine gun. Sprinting along, though, Scipio. Will Rizalit hear him? Does he know he's here? Literally walking into the back of him. It's gonna. Oh lord! What did we just see? Scipio, the murderer. Bombing run now from Electro. Slightly more where he would want it to be this time. Still not maybe as successful as uh, you might hope, but uh, the point slightly open here. I mean, Marek's uh, able to get close. Not going to even try and say that even closer make as well very very hurt here in the tank Not a good spot to be in a way. However, could just turn around and get one shell out. Going for the uh, for the flea instead. <laughs> Mate greedy with the satchel gets shot in the middle of a field. Good rocket. 76 so is going to take more than that. And he's going to get the gun turned on them now. We're going to regret that guys. Reluctant to take a shot there. Got plenty of HE, you'd think. Oh, Struz. Fatal error. Porsche is way too close. Might have already got the satchel on. He's down, but did he get the satchel on? That's the question.
Yes. Yes, he did. All questions answered there. Porsche with the big play to take out the tank that's been causing so many problems. Now, they just need to get into the point here. Okay, very falling. Santino with a big kill though, it looked like. Goes down though. Cyber Optic. Sitting it out. Very patient play. Still managing to cling on then, I suppose, the allies. Only a soft cap there. Still spread out enough around the uh, objective. In order to keep it, I see this is going hot here. Looks like actually quite a few. At least, uh, what, three? And the half track's still up there. Uh, could be a problem for the Axis if they uh, don't get at least a couple more people back because at the moment it looks like it's basically holopake and that's about it Okay, garrison-wise, they are struggling a little bit here, the Axis, uh, for their defensive carries. Rem if you remember, they had all of these uh, triangles that we were talking about before. That's all gone now. Um, and it looks like there might even be allied garrisons in their place. Garrison marker just over here, whether that's accurate or not. Hard to tell. Probably not. Can't hear anything. In this patch, obviously, you've got the uh, sounds made by the garrisons. It's like a radio noise. Over at Kirkveg, still struggling a little bit to get into the uh, the buildings here. don't think, even though they're right around the back, that they're much of a threat to the Allies at the moment. On the other hand, these guys up on Hill 400 uh, could be a threat to the Axis. I hear it. OP. Incorrect. They're actually way further away than they think, aren't they? That's interesting. War squads. Not not allowing themselves to be drawn too far away from their, uh, their job, which is defending. Okay, they could have chased him further away there, but... Ducker knows. It goes down. Nice from Hellopake there. A bit fortunate in a way. Like when he jumped, obviously, I think Duck had definitely heard. But uh, good shots to get the kill. Probably needs to be thinking that there's uh, some spawn points around there because uh, they are getting kind of uh, kind of pushed here at the back. Still got a few players back though. So all is not lost just yet. Here comes the defensive uh, recon plane like we mentioned before. Good use of it. The attackers 
of course, know exactly where the enemy are at Kirkveg. They push them right into the circle there. Not able to use any um, artillery though. Looks like their nodes have been completely dismantled at the back. Um, haven't kind of paid attention to keeping them up at the moment. They've got only 97 manpower here as well. So not going to be dropping too many supplies anytime soon, I don't think. Um, plenty of fuel though, obviously, because very few tags. Half track is still up here in E5, but uh, I don't know if they're making the best use of it in a way. Obviously, it's a good idea to get uh, around the back of this area here if there is an OP. Um, but uh, you would think that Jig might place their OP uh, over here. But So Don D squad underneath us now F5, F6. Getting around between these two. Flynn as well. Gonna destroy this gun I suppose. can. We're going to push pretty hard here, the Axis. Ninja Pulver. Versus Bacon here, out on the flank. Bacon doesn't realise he's there. Ninja's going to put something down. It's the barbed wire, so people are going to know. Goes down before he can place his OP, I think. Very little uh, defensive infrastructure to the south of Southern Approach, which is uh, a problem because it's allowing this whole area to get pushed pretty hard by the Allies. They don't have the height advantage, but um, with good use of nades and smoke grenades, uh, coordinated play, and by keeping spread out in the forest, they can kind of push up onto this area. It is possible. Um, they've had to send a lot of players back here, and uh, that's kind of costing them over at Kirkveg. Still not able to uh, get get right in there and hold the strong point. A little bit surprisingly, actually, I think... If they'd learned maybe um, a little bit from the plays a minute ago that the Allies had, where they were holding it so successfully with the tank, if if the Axis could get a tank up there, I know it would take a very long time, but uh, if they'd been sending it uh, for a little while, I mean it's 37 minutes remaining, they still could, um, get a tank up there and kind of play them at their own game um, with, a, with a heavy tank, that could just allow them the time... Uh, The time to take the point so kind of able to hold it here but it's a bit annoying for them they did have good attacks going on but it sort of took too long didn't get anywhere and now the momentum has shifted towards the allies again but the Allies have been needing to do this, um, get some attack going, just to take the pressure off at Kirkveg for some time. And I think Ninja Pulver probably taking some of the initiative there, um, getting his squad right around the back. Don D squad is moving up. Uh, they've kind of been moving up and moving up for ages though. Um, so that's a really, really wide flank. They probably need to get involved pretty soon. If they could get an OP up over here, uh, they might have one already, I don't know. Somebody <laughs> jump in, in the half track, are they? <laughs> this garrison's hot. So I'll flank him right round. Predus in the trees over there by it. Let, 
they really need to take Kerfeg. Uh because it's going to be hard for them to kind of hold out to this sort of attacking. Um, as we saw at the start, the Allies were in a similar position, uh, holding the point here and getting attacked from this, uh, like, east, where we are, like, going up to the west, with the attackers going west. Um, the Axis, you know, they know firsthand it's hard to hold that point in that way because they won it just by pushing it for long enough. Um, and not only that, but the uh, allies here are right wrapped around, so the axes are kind of cut off. It's not even as though, um, you know, they can kind of uh, have people uh, pushing right up from the back here because that that's not their back. Their back has been surrounded uh, but the Don D squad still kind of not really getting in there um, fully so until they do it's going to be quite hard for uh, these lot over here who have we got uh, Axel and Panzer, Reese, Elva here it's going to be hard for them to get through the barbed wire you can see the garrison there by Dingus. Reese is close. If they can take out the garrison on the point, that would be huge. Dingus down. Is it Dusin Treeb? Let me find it. Yeah. I thought it was, uh, but goes down. Maybe trades with Reese. Oh, here. It needs to get up there and get this Gary down. But they don't know that it's here. Not yet. I understand why you would want to sit in this bunker, trust me. Because here comes the artillery. Heavy shots here from the Allies. Or maybe it's the Axis. Hard to tell. Sounds like a bombing run. Is this Electro bombing his own guys again? No, it's not. It's artillery clearing out the point and Wakanda, over here, Gem, Ninja Pulver, all able to push right up towards the point. Pretty good use of the bombing run there. Maybe a few more people for that allies could have been pushing up, but pretty good players getting in there, although we're kind of down. Nice work here from the allies. They need to just get right in there. Put the uh, reinforce out on southern approach, but a little bit slow to get back here. The uh, the axis and it's costing them. They're all up here in E and F6, um, but they kind of haven't got the uh, point as much as they would have liked. Although they are starting to get people in there, I guess they didn't quite get up quickly enough. The allies maybe. Combined with some of this artillery, it's probably putting them off. But they did have the chance with the bombing run. Not able to quite capitalise on it yet. Just kind of being taken and then not being taken, contested. See this Axis tank here getting satcheled. Or oh, Allied tank, sorry. Let's take it out with a rocket. Could this be the opposite where we're on? No. Maybe a recon. Gary red hot there. In southern approach. That's not what they want. 
reformed gamer, one of the best players in last seasonal. In terms of kills. I literally can't wait for the seasonal. The uh, the video looks so good. Like, it's so good. Big ups to Dax Alberg, like I said before. Big shout out to him. Um, it literally made me like... I was getting like goosebumps. Loved it. I can't wait to see some of the uh, the trailers as well on the show tomorrow. Uh, that's the recapping. I can't even say it. The recapping. Um, it's like a weekly... Uh, recap, yes, that is a pun. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna obviously. I think I said earlier on, but we're gonna look at um, last seasonal, the results. Look at some of the new uh, communities who have joined, and uh, some of the old ones as well. Um, but primarily the qualifying uh, group. Then we're gonna talk about the qualifying games coming up, and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk to Heidi and Jane as well, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, Really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to the seasonal. And big thanks to them as well for putting it on, organising everything, um, as well as, you know, having the time to be all right, people and live lives and all the rest of it. You know, fair play. Respect. So, very much looking forward to it. I don't know which teams I'm most looking forward to seeing play. I mean, obviously, we've seen a lot of uh, players here on Squadline Battle. Um... There's uh, lots of people playing from SCDB uh, who I think I'd be interested to see how they do. Um, War as well. Um, they're obviously both teams playing at the weekend um, in different games. I don't recall who, who's playing who, actually. I can check. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the... Oops. My Discord is like being mega, mega slow. Um, so we have, uh, War versus, oh, Phoenix, yeah, that would be good. Phoenix as well, uh, another team that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, SCDB, of course, like I said before, um, Poland, Finns Let Loose, um, who we've seen before. I was lucky enough to stream last time, uh, last seasonal, um, you know, we'll look forward to seeing that. Uh... Bit unfortunate here at Southern Approach then for the Alloy, uh, for the Axis. They've uh, they've lost the point and absolutely swarmed here. As we said, kind of took too long hanging about back here. King Squad still hanging about back there. Um, maybe thinking that they can push through this way, but that's a long old way to run. Um, the Allies shooting their artillery into the trees but actually it's kind of too far um, and all in the same spot it looks like um, this may be Electro's bombing run yes it is uh, taking out some allies but also <laughs> some axes uh, only one this time though not half the team um, allowing the SCDB squad to push in however it is their squad leader who went down in the bombing run quite unfortunate that um, doing a good job of knocking out this dem squad pretty quickly. Uh, that was very impressive. I'm not quite sure if that was like coordinated shots from everyone or if that was just one player doing that, but that was crazy. Um, play Frost with more kills. But goes down. Very good play here, but they need to get uh, their spawns down. As close as possible, Sirius needs to get a spawn down right inside the point here. Doctor as well. This is the recon. For the allies. Trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Coordinated push after a bombing run is what happened. And that's the kind of thing on Squadline Battle, I suppose, that you can expect to see. I mean, um, we haven't talked about it today, but um, as I always say, Squadline Battle is like uh, a public game, but people know what they're doing. No, it's not competitive. Um, 
level of coordination uh, because everybody just meets for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes before the game but because people have to join as a squad uh, so anybody can play but you just sign up as a squad so whether that's a tank squad infantry squad uh, you know you can sign up as commander or a recon squad whatever you want um, you can play artillery you can uh, attack defend uh, you know just try and try and coordinate um, is the thing um, and that's the point everybody is trying to coordinate people have a mic um, because it's like that uh, sometimes just simple tactics like coordinating behind a bombing run um, can be really really successful uh, flip then again southern approach as we saw a uh, good coordinated push um, they're a little bit thinned out now here the axis inside the point and actually um, they don't really quite hold the cap point anymore um, the artillery is still causing some devastation for the allies but uh, bit too little too late um, although could they just cap it straight back I mean they are they are taking it right now um, it's not quite halfway caps but with 24 minutes to go it's flip flopping like crazy here at southern approach recon plane as well Acton Panzer over here Sergeant Shred holding the point for the allies kind of not quite sure what happened there for the Axis I suppose the artillery mashed them up quite a little bit um, they themselves don't really have any uh, supplies for artillery uh, their resource game has been uh, well, they didn't really realise, I think, that they, they lost so many resources early on. Um, slightly curious garrison placement uh, here in the south. It's sort of like Gary's for the sake of Gary's. The same maybe here as this one. Um, although, if it does fall back to eastern, this could be an important garrison. Um, but southern approach is kind of where they want to be focusing their attention um, and getting especially a garrison up on this side. Uh, getting even a garrison up here. They have got supplies here, but able uh, squad just not able to uh, put the put the Gary down. So uh, just looking over here now, it looks like uh, Basti maybe. Yeah, um, and he is trying to get there. He's trying to get there. You can see his move marker, um, but like I say, not able uh, so far. It doesn't necessarily realise that there's nobody else here needs to uh, just kind of commit to running over there at this point unless they've communicated and Kappa's doing it uh, that could be the case does kind of make sense uh, was he there though trying to push in does Kappa realize yes just trying to get inside the blue um, so that's good play there Will Wazoo hear the Gary going up? No, and gets shot. Good good skills there from Mr. Zinka, I guess. I guess it was him. Wakanda over here in the trees, and Nick running up. Looks like a garrison over here, which makes sense for the allies. Um, over on this artillery marker, as we can see uh, below us. Shame they're not dropping artillery, but they can't really because they've only got 20 munitions. That's why it's so important to keep your resources in the game. I mean, <coughs> they're kind of way less important and way uh, easier to acquire in this um, update. But, you know, it's easy probably to forget them as well. Um, so uh, they sort of neglected to really replace the ones that did get taken out. And it's costing them dearly at the moment in terms of artillery. They'd love to be able to put some shells into these trees and, uh, you know, fight off the enemy once and for all. Get them actually back to Kirkveg. Um, Abel here does get the garrison up, so that's good. They're managing to actually kind of get a bit of uh, coverage now. Although they've lost one down here and it's causing uh, some problems down on the uh, the edge here. We can see F, uh, uh, J, L uh, infantry markers over this way. It's quite a few enemies, can't, uh, isn't there, down the the road here. Struggling a bit, the Axis. Um, you know, they have kept it back, but 
they do need to kind of consolidate here hold the hold it out um, get some people around the back just just do the right things um, don't rush it um, they need somebody back taking out that artillery for sure as well I don't know what the situation nodes wise is for the uh, allies but um, they could easily have people on the artillery uh, when Candace realized Torfisk's over there too uh, whether they've got a lot of kills I don't know but um, if they've got the supplies then they know where the enemy are going to be don't they let's face it right here inside southern approach and it's so open there's like that one little bunker but that's it not nice supplies going down over on the uh, the left of the screen here um, just to the south of Southern Approach. 19 minutes on the clock. Allies push right round, but Gem goes down before he can push up and build an, a closer OP. Here comes uh, the artillery from Torfisk and Wakanda. Not killing anyone at the moment in the right sort of areas and there we go playing fairly confident here some of these uh, infantry despite there being shells literally falling all around them but paying the price should have taken cover in the buildings Johannes spawns on the garrison below us it looks like a million shells all in the same spot kind of uh, be a much better idea to move around a little bit more considering in the trees the enemies are often very spaced out you can see here uh, they probably don't have markers because otherwise there'd be a lot more down here a lot more shells down there by Major uh, Havoc Lucan But just laying it on thick and, and fast to the uh, southern approach here. Ghost Rider inside the point, it's the only person. But no allies able to back up this artillery uh, assault on the point. They don't have the infantry in place. You can see the Baker squad there on the map uh, in E7. Keypads 5 through 8 through 7. Uh, they are uh, being able to... Uh, yeah, hold it for the Fox Squad as well. Push push out into this area, get their OPs up in a powerful triangle, push out into this area. They want to get another garrison up over here, ideally. Although they are under attack from behind, it looks like. But they have got a back garrison, albeit a little far away. Uh, but they, they have done a good job of pushing up around here. They've also, though, like I said, abandoned the point. Um, let's just catch up with the uh, tank here. Direct artillery hit could cause some problems. So they've got enemies up the hill. Ragnarok dead inside the point, is he? Well, 76 goes down. I was just going to try and uh, join them and see something from their perspective, but uh, going down, which is important for the uh, for the Axis, um, probably pretty bad for the Allies. So a bit more pressure now on Kirkveg. Uh, the tables have sort of turned again in terms of the pressure, in terms of the momentum, and the, uh, the Axis kind of able to get a bit of a flag on Jesus Christ, who we've seen a lot recently on Squad Line Battle. Really good player, Phoenix uh, player. So they they're playing as well. Um, just uh, just this weekend. Uh, let's see who they're playing. Sorry, it cuts the sound off when I go on the Discord, but uh, that is how it is. Um, hopefully, you can still see everything. So we've got the uh, 
seasonal discord so we've got like i said uh earlier uh war red army versus uh oh versus phoenix yeah um then who else we got csp versus trirex um that should be a good one fins like loose versus bwr looking forward to that too uh dcr uh versus gmgs that'll be good scdb of course like i said earlier they're playing too um should be a really good one uh coming up so uh yes looking forward to it very much I, we haven't um, been told exactly who we're streaming yet um but uh hopefully fingers crossed i should get to be casting on one of the games so make sure you come check that out um again it'd be 15 minute delay uh so i won't be kind of talking um too much live but we will be live tomorrow with the show um the recapping uh, at the moment we're recapping the, the previous tournament and then um looking forward to the tournament ahead but normally we'll be kind of recapping the week uh that's just gone before uh and uh yeah got heidi and jane on tomorrow so like i said earlier i can ask for two better guests honestly for the first episode um it's on what on no connections uh stream so a bit jealous of that of course uh because that's going to be probably a really big show um but the week after it will be on mine but uh, you can catch it on mine because i will be hosting of course um so yeah looking at the game then um We've got Kirkveg being taken here. Um, good positioning here with the half track. Able to kind of push round uh, to the back. Whether or not it's in a dangerous position from this tank is a different matter. Um, it doesn't seem like they know it's there, but Abel's marker has obviously clearly defined a tank. Uh, Nispel gets a kill on somebody over there. I didn't see quite who, um, but is going to now probably get the rocket Struz though with the mega is jumping out to get the kill that was pretty big for them definitely want to get a tank up here I think uh, the axis they do have this tank uh, over here but um, ideally if they could get a, a tiger or something to push up here um, obviously the tiger not amazing against the 76 uh, you probably want to get rid of the 76 with a coordinated satchel push with some smoke shells or something like that. Um, or just people using their smokes to block the line of sight for the tank. But um, they're using the smoke shells here instead. The tank kind of a little bit further back and somewhat out of the action. Actually out of the sector if the marker is correct. If any of you are playing in the tournament as well, um, make sure you uh, take you know clips of your best bits, put them in the clips channel on the Discord, uh, the seasonal Discord, and uh, we might play them on the show. We can have a clips uh, section. Um, also, obviously, if you watch other casters as well, if you see like your game or whatever, uh, make sure you uh, make sure you clip there. Uh, their stream as well and uh, put the link to that in the clips channel um, in the seasonal discord and like I say we might uh, play it and not just us other people as well because obviously uh, lots of other casters doing lots of uh, presentation and stuff around the seasonal which is really cool um, just like squadline battle is now on two servers which is really awesome the seasonal bigger than ever with the 24 tw uh, teams you know it's not just uh, not just sort of a medium sized tournament anymore it's like a full on it'll be taking months soon uh, I mean it takes months already uh, but you know the half the year will be like forget the seasonal it'll be like the year the years and all um, shut up yeah I know um, good moves here though from the axis to take the uh, the point only 10 minutes remaining on the clock I don't think the allies are probably going to be able to um, come back in that time uh, they have played very well though um, some good scores as we can see here uh, We'll probably try and catch up with um, some of the uh, the scores like at the end, uh, but um, yeah, decent play here. Uh, the tank squad are able to do a little bit. It looks like as well. 
Uh, Dingus Khan's squad have played well. Um, Nitro's squad have played well. Uh, Jesus Christ, as I said before, like Nispel uh, just managed to kill uh, that tank earlier, I think. Um, who's this? Yeah, Flick, Kappa. Flick always plays really well. He nearly 500 points. Uh, combat effectiveness. Um, where the team hasn't played that well here, the Axis maybe, is the uh, support game, although um, they have kind of managed to get the resource loads up eventually, um, allowing them uh, enough for those smokes a minute ago, but not quite able to kind of hold on to the point decisively here. Um, still, I'm not sure quite why. Maybe they think... Maybe they think they're just going to get kind of bombed and blown up. You know, the tank can get some of them if they push into there, but not all of them. Um, but they ideally do want to get and get around and get the tank if they're going to try and go for the win, uh, you know, the big win. Um, but at this point, it's really a case of just keeping the pressure up here at Kerikberg, I suppose, um, until the moment where... Uh, the allies sort of give up defending and just go for like, well, maybe we can all just throw ourselves at the point for the last, like, couple minutes and actually win it. Um, and at that point, probably just send everybody back to defend. Uh, just sort of, like, collapse the front line and um, just have everybody set up at Southern Approach. Um, there are obviously a lot of allies around Southern Approach at the moment, um, and they will be going for the push right at the end. Uh, the Axe is doing a good job of kind of sitting a lot of people in there and the Allies are obviously very, very spaced out all the way down the hill. So um, for them, it's going to kind of come down to the last couple of minutes. If they can get right around, uh, we can see this marker over here, dog marker. Um, half track maybe going to go down just now. Wakanda with the kill on the half track. I think that was a half track. My eyes are a little bit sore. Don't know why. Can't see quite right. Need glasses. Um, Panzer four. I'm kind of looking the wrong way. Obsessed with Vistic when actually there's a whole squad behind him. He doesn't know that though. Although there are quite a few enemy infantry markers here, uh, the access do kind of know that this is where the push is coming from and with seven minutes remaining it's looking a bit dangerous for them they're a bit bunched up and grouped in here if there can be shells put down on this uh, area that could be a real problem or even a bombing run ggrt i don't know if that's uh genuine from jesus christ there we have to think yes. They are winning at the Axis. And recon plane goes up. Is there going to be a bombing run on the point in the last kind of minute? Obviously once it goes, you know, below about two minutes then there's no way that they can cap it. And that's why as I said before, they sort of left Kirkwig alone now, and they're just all here on the defence. Uh, they've got these lot pushing them from uh, the north, but it's not really enough. Uh, the southern attackers, again, have to get through the barbed wire, so it is definitely possible. Um, and in a way, they have quite a strong approach up through the trees here, but uh, it's a slow game to get in there. And they haven't got enough time, the Allies, I don't think. This vector from the uh, kind of the rear um, over here on Baker and Able Marker is probably the best chance that the Allies have right now. Um, but it's very heavily defended over there by the Phoenix Squad, SEDB Penny, Capra um, over there as well. Oh, the sweet sound of car 98 in the morning. Okay, looks like it could uh, could really be over here and Electro probably with the win um, because they've really thrown everything at the point here, the Allies, to the extent that they're now losing Kirkberg to just a few people in the sector.
interesting that both of these points, you know, the decisive defensive factor has been having a tank. Um, and like I mentioned at the start, a couple of weeks ago we saw uh, the tank being put to really effective use inside Hill 400 as well defensively. Um, I think that is at the moment the sort of meta for this map. Um, if you want to uh, defend the points, it's a lot, a lot easier if you can get a tank kind of closer inside. Um, I've thought that for a long time. Um, down, especially like I said before, down on uh, derail train or broken train, whatever it's called. Um, you can see this. I can't. <laughs> So you can see what it's called. Um, okay, four minutes to go. Artillery is still coming in on southern approach, but probably not enough at this point. Um, technically could still take it, but I don't see enough allies in the area here really. Um, they kind of got people all around. Um, but not really enough as you can see pretty outnumbered inside or at least close to inside the sector or at least close to the uh, the hard cap pretty savage artillery but in some ways not doing a lot to kind of clear the relevant areas as you can see uh, the Phoenix squad Jesus Christ um, all of those guys up through those trenches are probably holding off um, the allies more than the players who are actually inside the hard point so oftentimes with artillery it's important to just put it slightly ahead of your infantry and kind of walk it back um, you know with them as they advance um, clear out the area directly in front of them rather than sort of a little bit deeper because um, that helps them to push forward rather than just getting a lot of kills maybe uh, on like people at the back um, okay so Almost at this three minute mark now, um, and it's looking like uh, a 3 2 for uh, the Axis led by Electro this week. Uh, again, looking at the scores there, we can see that um, been a few good squads. Uh, Bassi squad here doing really nicely, um, getting a lot of good kills. Make, uh, as always, playing really well. SCDB squad at a very high level. Uh, Penny getting some good tank kills as well, perhaps, um, and some satchels. Uh, Pashano, Gonzo, um, Hollow Pake, you know, all played well. We've seen um, just hanging out in the in the point. These lot, uh, they defended quite well. Um, you can see they've all got very high defensive uh, score here. Like remained very much inside the sector uh, in an appropriate way. Um, didn't kind of overextend too much. Uh, Serious, uh, his squad's played really well, of course, as well. Um, Mr. 7656 uh, played really uh, well as Assault. Um, Faker 2. Freaking Havoc, Stefan Rost as well. Smokes out here, but there's nothing they can do at this point. Final bombing run here from Electro. Right over all those markers. Doesn't actually kill too many people because the markers are pretty inaccurate. Um, I don't think it destroyed the tank either. Nope. Not sure it even can. 76 there. But big thanks to Werner Voss again, um, to all the players, all the uh, both the commanders, to John D for having us on the server, uh, and to everyone watching, and who's going to watch. Um, it's been a good one. Been an interesting one. Um, I look forward to speaking to both the commanders after the game. Um, Alexa said, "Don't call him if he gets five 0 so I'm sure he'll be happy." Uh, with a 4-2, so... Or 3-2, I'm going to say, so... Filthy rubbish, 3-2.
10 seconds. Everyone just firing in the air. <laughs> so loud. Good stuff. Right, well, let's uh, talk to Electro then, I suppose. Uh, just give him about 10 seconds to calm down, do his commending, say thank you. Um, but uh, we'll get straight on and talk to him. Shadow Hunter getting loads of commendations there. I got promoted. Gotta love that. Take me a long time to get promoted just doing this uh, this streaming, but I did play a little bit earlier. Uh, went on live and then played a little bit of live Tarkov. Um, I'm terrible. As anybody who watched me uh, will attest, but um, just have fun uh, playing some duos, and uh, it's just like a sort of chilled out uh, experience. Basically, we seriously, seriously don't take it seriously. Um, but you know it's not like gear fear and raging and all that like we just uh just play like medium medium tarkov uh whispers like really good the guy that i play with um and uh i die a lot uh so you get to see that see my ridiculous reactions uh <laughs> jumping all over the place and steering my guy like with my head i don't know um but let's uh Let's jump on. Uh, I might even be on after this as well. Uh, I'll talk to uh, Electro now. Um, it looks like we're probably going to get Papa on as well, which is really cool. Um, I might I just bring them on together? Okay, great. How can I join? Right, so. Uh, Hello, Garth. How are you, my friend? I'm okay. How are you? I'm fine. It was a very tough game. That was tough. It was like flip-flopping all over the place. Yes, I liked it so much. We lost and take the middle point so many times. Yeah. Let's uh, let's see if we can get Electro in here as well. Hopefully, he's uh, he said he would talk to us. Or well, he he said he wouldn't talk to us if it was a five uh, five nil, so <laughs> oh. here he is. How how are you doing, you guys? <laughs> you good? Yeah, absolutely. How about you? Yes, not too bad. Thank you. GG's. Well played. Uh, of course, well played to you as well, uh, Papa. How uh, how did you guys find it? I mean, that was you know, uh, Papa said it was like really. Um, a f sort of tough game I, I think that's fair what well think, any Electro? game that, uh, that ends 2-3 uh, or 3-2 is a tough game for sure it like flip flop like what three times Some guaranteed approach. it did yes yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I uh, I'm just thinking about the um, I don't know I want to bring it up but <laughs> I feel bad what happened with the uh, the bombing run uh, Electro Oh yeah, I dropped one bombing round uh, when that guy I was lighting up hot, <laughs> and uh, that actually it actually got a couple of kills if I'm not mistaken. Yes, some kills. Yeah, mostly your uh, own team though, wasn't it? It was. Uh, it. Uh, I told them to get <laughs> under under stuff, <laughs> so they were going under bunkers and stuff. And it, I said, okay, it was just we'll, like we'll, sorry we'll in, do the, it. In, in the comment sorry. chat. Funny. I did not think about it, but at the end, even that uh, minor goof, it actually worked in our favor because at the time that oh, those bombs were dropping, those guys were like, and OPs that we had the bag were lighting up hot. So uh, it actually got a couple of kills and uh, <laughs> potentially pre prevented or paved the way for an enemy attack. But that was fun. Yeah, yeah. So um, definitely what, one of the highlights. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. Um, but I think what, like, what was the plan? I'd be interested to sort of kind of hear like what your intent was before the game, Electro. Do you wanna, do you want me to share my screen so that I show you the strat kit? Uh, yeah, it might be hard. I let me set up the uh, the capture. Um, so yeah, uh, go for it. Okay. So where are we? Where are we? Sure. Do we need? 
All right. So, uh, if you see my, if you see my screen here, my search kits, going full screen. So, if you see it now, uh, it was uh, it was a very straightforward uh, plan. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Attack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just get inside the mid cup. That's what it looks so like. Yeah, I'm going to show you Southern Approach. Um, so did you have a hint that it was going to be Southern Approach at the start? Oh, no, no, no. I prepared for everything, but oh, it was like the same plan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's show you Southern Approach, and this is very representative of pretty much everything else. Um, so what I wanted, I had seven squads, and I wanted one squad to... So defense and attack is pretty straightforward, but I wanted one squad to, to do armored infantry and basically just stay at the rear quadrant of, of, of our armor. Mm -hmm. uh, they said, they told me, and that's uh, part of my feedback, they told me that this is illogical and we're not going to babysit the tank. <laughs> <laughs> really so, now? I am, I am <laughs> not kidding. They did not get that at all. Um, you know, Hill at Loose is all about combined arms for me, and uh, in having armored infantry is definitely a very, a very nice way to to to, to do a breakthrough, right? Especially yeah. when the enemy has entrenched very well; they're playing very good defense. Right, anyway, right. they said they did not want that, um, so they. Uh, I had one squad uh, uh, playing uh, dynamic, essentially between attack and defense. So. Um, the the plan here uh, specifically was to to all basically get inside circle at the beginning during the warm up mm -hmm. and have all three uh, transport tracks uh, supply track everything uh, basically gang up on, on circle yeah. yeah and then that column with the Panzer IV would go into um, would go into uh, their different ways, depending on which uh, point it was. So everybody starts, you know, at circle. But mm -hmm. on southern approach specifically, uh, what we did is we wanted to bring the Panzer IV right in the middle. Uh, they died somewhere along the way here. <laughs> we wanted uh, three garrisons um, uh, to do a three-prong attack. But uh, what happened is that the, the bottom flank here, which is uh, DC and uh, HLL ITA, they were the unlucky ones. The enemy had really good control of this uh, of this row row eight mm -hmm. here, and that delayed us uh, a little bit. Also, a lot of people got stuck while driving. So I yeah, I saw, I saw the uh, truck there on the railway. Yeah, on the and railway. As was, you mentioned, the, I was um, biting my nails. Uh, is he going to get it unstuck? For God's yeah, sakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like the Italian squad and whoever's there in grey and in um, orange, you know, they obviously like, they have to push up through the barbed wire there. And I think um, that stalled them that, a little bit. Yeah. The, the idea was to to have that armor get them, get them through that uh, choke point, essentially. But the armor died. Uh, but uh, then there was um, 116 and war that came from the top, and uh, they did a really good job with the hill. So I had control of the hill, and that's what saved me, control of the high ground on yeah. certain approach. We basically gave up the, the, the point at the beginning of the game, if you think about it. And I mean, you had so much further sorry, to go. Sorry with, to like, interrupt the you. That's the reason I did my first bombing run in hill. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. This is where it would go. Um, so what was, uh, so Terry, what was your attack. plan to uh, kind of, was it similar to this to like take a hill and kind of push through to the south or was it like? Um, yes, it was uh, like uh, like this. I wanted the control map. I have spread uh, every squad. Uh, all the guys made uh, my instructions by the book. Yeah. I think it was my fault we lost. I oh. made some mistakes. What well, what do you think they were then? Uh, what? Uh well, like what what mistakes? What mistakes? Uh, one mistake it was that I had only two squads to push hill. Yeah. Yeah, well like uh Electro was saying I guess that was his like control area so it's kind of an imbalance then. The other uh... A fault is I made uh, two airheads uh, 
very wrong and we lost them but I make one that uh, went well mm -hmm. at uh, Fox uh, 8 I think I, if I remember yeah uh, I, I actually, had an darty I, I, I waited I waited for his first third hit I knew he was going to overextend <laughs> after capping southern i wait and as soon as they said guys i see the enemy air hit and they said enemy air hit taken out i said this is the, uh, this is time to drop our own air hit yeah. i didn't make a lot of garrison by my own mm -hmm. uh, I, I told uh, some guys to make garrisons and they make them all the time we had uh, seven or eight garrisons yep and i think i think for both teams like so um when the allies fell back to Kirchweg, they made good use of a tank uh, to defend, and there was good use at the end there, especially of the Panzer IV from the Axis inside Southern Approach. I In think... the whole game, my tank was on defense of yeah. Kirchweg, and uh, two times went to Southern, and we capped the one of them. Yeah, I think that was like really clear from watching the game, is how powerful having the tank in defense is. And how yes, powerful yes. as well using um, on this map, especially using defensive um, recon plane. Uh, yes, recon plane is very important. Because, like attacking wise, like everyone, like you kind of know where the enemy are already, but because people can kind of be very spread out through the trees uh, and like be flanking you, using the defensive, uh, you know, uh, recon plane is really important. Um, my, like both of you, I, you did some of each, and it was way, way more decisive for both uh, when it was defensive. It was really interesting. Y yes, nine of ten my records was defensive. Mm. I, I think that in this map, at least the way that um, those uh, points lined up between Southern and Kirchweg, any recon plane would <laughs> would work, right? You can just throw it on row seven, <laughs> and it will show both. Fun yeah, true, true. I don't, I don't get, I don't get. It's just like a really wide, yeah. A, like whenever, like the wide flank is uh, possible. So, like oh. um, at southern front, uh, southern uh, approach, for example, you mentioned like how uh, you know, actually both times or three times when it flip flopped, the uh, the powerful ways to attack it. So there's like three ways to attack it. One, you can come in from uh, like F five down from the north where right. your light blue line is or you can go through the purple and dark blue lines from the south basically right. uh, or then from Bergstein um, or like through that red line on the other side like through that central road but tough one. That's tough when one, the yeah. when the like so for example when um, it was on Kirkveg and uh, the axis were pushing onto Kirkveg the that area is all like fields and hedgerows and fences and walls. So in a way, you kind of know roughly where the enemy are going to be because one, they're going to be like around their point and two, they're going to be along the hedgerows and the walls and everything because in the middle of the field is, you know, a death trap kind of thing. So, um, but then in the in the forest, like above uh, and around Hill 400 and like even behind between Eastern Slope and Hill 400, um, you know, doing like a column, uh, defensive kind of recon like for both teams like I say mm -hmm. we uh, we could see like sometimes you would do it offensively and sometimes defensively but those uh, defensive ones were way uh, you know they they identified like uh, garrisons where like you didn't realize or somebody just about to build a garrison that you, you know otherwise wouldn't have been spotted so um, really interesting in, to see how important they were in securing the points it was a uh, it was a game of map control essentially uh, yes, and and, and like defensive after tanking. After the event, I loved that game. It was very tough for me. It was a matter of minutes, lose or uh, take the middle point. Yeah, and even was... at the end there, like it started to to that get capped for a nice second. For gameplay and for the other players, I think. Well, I felt mm -hmm. on my end, I felt that I really had to, I really had to tell people to go back even at eight minutes there were squads uh, you know really pushing Kirchweg and and going going from Bergstein down to Kirchweg and and it, it blew my mind like it's guys <laughs> after 20 minutes we should probably on all run back and establish good map control on the yeah. four squares uh of the mid cap <laughs> but but no no they, they still wanted to 
they still wanted to attack. Uh, so at around eight minutes, I had to put my foot down on that. Um, in terms of uh, of uh, squad performance, I would say everybody did an amazing job. Uh, big kudos to all the defensive squads for uh, for holding Southern Approach. Even if there was one squad in the mid middle cap, they, they would still hold it uh, with the help of a reinforcer or something. They would still make it. Uh, and uh, kudos to the offensive squads for, for cupping Kirchweg at least once. Uh, our recon did an excellent job uh, removing enemy garrisons. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just there to enjoy the show and just give them their marching orders. Yeah, that of course, man. Good, well played to the players. Yeah, absolutely. On both teams. I wish, I wish we had... Um, the thing that I had in mind was to, to have a, a breakthrough using armored infantry. That was, you know, the my my deep desire mm -hmm. from this match. But uh, but we could we could we just couldn't do it. Uh, and I've done it in I've done it in Hill 400 before. I've done it uh, with uh, my buddies at Phalanx. We've definitely done some some tiger, you know, capping all the points with uh, <laughs> with a riot of, of guys coming behind it. So. Yeah. That was that was definitely something that I wanted to repeat here. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, like I said, uh, there were a little bit recalcitrant in, mm -hmm. in this, to this idea. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, thanks to both of you and thanks to all the players. Thanks to Werner Voss and Don D, um, Dragster. Thanks, um, everyone. And uh, uh, hopefully well. we'll see you again soon. Um, and yeah, well played, uh, Electro. Uh, very close. Papa. Nice Very close. You. It was and, uh, awesome. Have a good night. Yeah, man. Take care. Bye Thanks to you guys. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I realized that the display capture there was like completely uh, off at the end, but um, it's because I was, I don't know, rushing to do it. Uh, don't often do that. But um, yeah, as we discussed, you know, attacking from the the north and south so important they're um using like the whole width of the map basically or the whole depth however you look at it um of the map to uh you know get those garrisons up get the flanks on as always in this game um attacking at right angles or like completely opposite um you know is very important uh the tanks really interesting uh, to see how important they were for control um and uh good artillery as well um although sometimes it was like maybe a little bit deep um, and kind of taking out enemies but not necessarily the ones right in front of the friendly players allowing them to move up um, so well played to all the players well played to the commanders thanks again to all the people i mentioned before um, come check out the show 100 percent tomorrow it's going to be great um, really looking forward to it really looking forward to the um, seasonal and um, yeah, catch you soon thanks for uh, all the people who follow and uh, thanks to um the people who've been watching today and engaging in the chat and um yeah see you next time uh see you at the weekend actually as well probably if uh some of you will be watching whichever game i uh, get to stream um look forward to it and make sure you put your uh clips as well like i said in the uh the clips channel of the discord the seasonal discord because uh, we might play them on our show next week, which would be uh, kind of cool. So, And also clips of other streamers that you uh, are watching uh, cast the games. All right, well, that's all from me, guys. Um, Squadline Battle, Server 2, another great game. Um, sign up. The thing will be open next week. Uh, next week? Tomorrow? Uh, for next week. Um, the uh, sign-up sheet, so just join the Discord sign-up. You can come with your friends, and as long as you're playing as a whole squad, you can do anything you like. Um, just try and follow the orders. Don't be so recalcitrant. What a brilliant word there from Electro. Um, and, uh, yeah, have have fun. That's the important thing. So uh, take care, guys, and see you at the weekend or next week. Or after, because I might actually just jump on and do a bit of Tarkov. So stick around for that if you actually want to. <laughs>